Here we are, another week in a study in 1 Corinthians. This is week nine. Week nine. We've been in this study for nine weeks already, studying what Paul was saying to the to the Corinthians, to the Corinthian church. And boy, this is rich. It's it's I mean getting really strong in what God is saying to his people. See, we want we what I want in this this ministry, what this ministry wants is to see the people of God strengthened, lifted up. And, and guided and directed to a place that they can come to realize and understand that, that God is there for them, that his word is there for them. He's there to strengthen them and lift them up and guide them and direct them through a life that, Lord, they can look back over their life and say, I have done something that ha- that has furthered God's kingdom, that has seen God glorified all over the planet. Oh, I thank God for the privilege that he gives me to do that every day of my life. I'm talking about every day of my life. And that's what this study's all about. That's what this this in him study started in June the 21st of 2021. That's where all this started at. We went through the entire book of Romans. And now we're in 1 Corinthians teaching people who they are in Christ Jesus. The benefits of that. The strength that comes in that. So I, this this is the time that I always use to take and thank God for the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, sowing into God's kingdom through this ministry, helping us give this word away, give this encouragement away to the world that we live in so the world's eyes can be opened to who they are in Christ Jesus or who they can be if they're not born again. Salvation's an important, important part of this ministry, and we want to see the lost of this world born into God's family through faith in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And then I, we want them to come to the knowledge and understanding of what God has said about them in, the, in His Word, where they can stand strong and not allow religion to push them away, to, to, to just push them down and push them away from God because that's what shame and condemnation of the world and religion does for people. It pushes them away. I know, I know, I ran, I ran from, from typical religion. I ran from church because I didn't know who I was. I, I had never been told that I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. But I want to tell you today, God is for you. He's for you, and he wants more than anything to see you born into his family if you're not born again. So in saying that, I want you to don't forget to download this, this phone app. Download this phone app and get a hold of what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in his word. You know, I bring these prayers to you Monday through Friday. And, you know, I desire that the world come to understand what Paul wanted the Ephesians to understand, that God's love is 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 great and, and huge for the world we live in. God wants you to know that he loves you and he cares for you. And that is my desire for every person that walk, walks the face of this planet, that they come to realize and know his love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. Ephesians 1.15, Paul says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. 
Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in, and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that He opens my eyes to His love more and more every day. And He does it through His Word. You know, religion points us to feelings. He and and He point religion points us to to, to go on how we feel. But God's truths, God's truths, if you will believe God's truths, God will point you to the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that He has for every living human being on this on this earth today. And He loves us and He cares for us and wants more than anything for us to know it. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your Word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16 today. It says, Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, Paul wanted the Corinthians to know that. He wanted the Corinthians to, to get hold of that, that they were the church and, and God's, they were God's temple and God dwelled in them. Through his Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible talks about it says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dead dwells in you. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. God's spirit dwells in you. You know, me and my daughter was talking this morning. I take her to school a lot of mornings and and uh we were talking this morning. I said, you know, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, honey, dwells in you. That means you have a direct line to God's God's spirit, to, to knowing what God wants us to do. But we have to we have to give the Holy Spirit something to work with. And 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 a lot of times the our spirit is starved for the truth. It's starved for what thus saith the word of God. And and when when we don't have the word in us, the Holy Spirit has nothing to work with. He has nothing to inject into our lives. If, if, if say, say this, say I need something that is, uh, I mean, it desperately needs something. And, and if I, but if I don't have God's word in me, God's spirit that dwells in me has nothing to put, put into me. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? God's spirit will always point you to God's word. And, when you come to understand that you are the temple of God, that God's children, God's born again children, God, the uh, the Holy Spirit came and took up His abode in people that are born again. When we get born again, the the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us, and and we can walk in those truths and stand in those. But but a lot of people, you know, they don't they don't uh, think anything about. Uh, God's spirit dwelling in them, and I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. If if you don't hold uh, that truth important in your life, you'll never hear from God's spirit because it it will it it's not it, God's a gentleman. He's not going to to uh, make you hear him. He's not going to force you to do something that you don't want to do. 
and that is if you don't want to hear from God, you're not going to hear from him. His spirit dwells in you if you're born again, and, and he will do everything that you allow him to, to, to operate in your life and to help you through life. But you got to be, uh, you got to be able to hear him, willing to hear him. You've got to want to hear him. Cause I promise you, if, if all you're looking at is the world, the world will drown out what God wants to do in your life. It's, it's how, what, it's what we pay attention to in our lives. Is what get, what feeds us, and if you're paying attention to the world, to to circumstance, to social media, to the TV, to everything that goes on around you, if you're if you're constantly focused on on those things, God's Spirit will not be a a big driving force in your life. Even though, if you're born again, His His Spirit dwells in you. So you say, well, what am I supposed to do? What am, what am I supposed to, how am I supposed to, uh, to hear God's Spirit? How am I supposed to, to, to act on what God sell, tells me to do? Uh, well, first of all, first of all, you, you need to pray and, and desire God's, God's Spirit to, to lead you and guide you, but then you have to listen. But, but more, most, more importantly than, than, than listening is having something in your heart and that is the the word of God that the Holy Spirit can can lead you with and direct you with, because I I noticed things in my life that I didn't I didn't even give a second th- thought to years ago. I, I'm serious. Did not take a give a second thought to my my daughter was listening to this song this morning, and uh, it's a good song. I mean, there, there's a uh, there's some good meaning in this song, but there's there's a couple of things about that song that makes me uneasy, and and it's it's talking about needing God. You know, he talks about I need you, and 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 if he's born again, he has him dwelling in him. But but I know what how how what the the author or the artist that's singing this song is talking about. But I also know that if you don't speak that you have Jesus Christ in your heart. And, and if you're constantly saying, I need you, I need you, he's saying, I'm right here, I'm right here. Just ask me. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. All you have to do is, is receive what God has for you. But you're never going to hear that spirit, God's spirit that dwells in your heart until you've got enough of God's word in you for him to interject into you and still have enough sense to listen and hear it, hear it. Because uh, I'm going to tell you something. I, I t- I'll tell this story all the time about Alan Crowder. Alan, Cr- Alan Crowder is a man of faith. He's a man that, that, that loves me. I know he does. I mean, him and his wife are, are just, just outstanding people. And, and, and I know how they feel about me. I know they love me, but the first time I ever I met Alan, Alan told me, he said, I'm not trying to interject any fear into you. I, he said, I'm not trying to sow fear into you. He said, but I want you to pay attention in here. He said, because there's some bad people in this place, and, and you need to pay attention. But what come up in me, Alan wasn't trying to scare me. He, he, he wasn't trying to hurt me at, at all. He just wanted me to pay attention to what my surroundings but what come up, up in me is no weapon formed against me will prosper. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Why? Because I was listening to my heart, to what God said to, to my heart through his precious Holy Spirit. And, and, my, and my spirit didn't bear witness with what Alan said. My spirit spoke the remedy for what Alan was, was talking about, and that was... No, no, no weapon formed against you prosper. Didn't have a worry in the world. I go in that jail on a weekly basis, on about just about on a daily basis during the week, and don't don't think anything about fear or something coming against me because I know the one that opened the door for me. And Alan got got me to come over there and help him, but God opened the door for both of us. And I promise you, what God opens the door on. He will make sure that you're taken care of in the process of you doing it. See, 
that's the that's a, a prime example. That's a big example that I use of how God has spoken to me over the years. You know, you say, well, you, do you hear it, hear him every time he speaks? No, no, I don't. The Lord spoke to my heart years ago. He said, son, when you can get to where you're as sensitive to my voice, to my spirit, as you are a bad tooth, then you can really be used in this world for my glory and honor. And, and that is so true. I, I desire to be sensitive to hearing what thus saith the word of God and doing it, doing it, not second guessing. Was that me or was that the, uh, the Holy Spirit? Because God's, God's spirit dwells in me. I'm a born again child of God and I know where I stand with him. But I have got to come to the place in my life that I know without a shadow of a doubt when he speaks. And a lot of times, the circumstance and my feelings and what's going on around me, around me distracts me from hearing what he's saying. Because like I said, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force me to, to do what he says. He's not going to force me to stop, slow down, and listen to what he says. He's going to speak it. And if I'm not willing to hear it, I, it's my fault, not his. And I thank God Listen to me, I thank God every day that I have come to know these simple truths in my life. And you say, well, how do you come to know these truths? How do you, how do you get in a place that you, that, that you can hear God? I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm as certain of it as the, sky, or as the sky is blue and the sun comes up in the east and sets in the west every day. I'm so sure that when you find out who God says you are in his word and, and permeate your heart with those scriptures and, and permeate your heart and renew your mind with the word of God and, and you're dwelling on the word of God and comparing your life to the word of God, that, you, that it, over time it will change you and it will put you in a place that I promise you that the Holy Spirit can lead you and guide you and speak to your heart and help you see and understand that, my goodness, all you've got to do, all you got to do is listen. Listen to what thus saith the word to your heart. And if the word is in you and, and you're listening to it, you're paying attention to what God is saying, you're wanting to hear God speak to you, I promise you, you're, you'll hear it. And when you hear it, then you'll come to a place in your life that you say, wow, I got it. I got it, and, and, and I'm going to stand on those truths. So listen to me. You're the temple of God. You are, and God's Spirit dwells in those temples. Us, our ch- us as the church, God's Spirit dwells in us, and He wants to speak to us and guide us and direct us. Paul wanted the Corinthians to know that, and I want you to know that. As a born-again child of God, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, God's Spirit dwelling in you to help you and, and comfort you and strengthen you and guide you through this world. But you have to put God's Word in there for Him to have something to deal with you on. I promise you, He'll always point you to his word. Now listen, I've got that that draws me right back to where, I, where I'm always at about this time during this podcast. I want to know, are the people that are listening to this podcast born again? Now I know we've got all kinds of people that, that are born again that listen to this podcast on a daily basis, but I always come to the point in this podcast to make sure that I give an invitation for people that are not born again to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You say, well, I believe in God. I, that's wonderful. I, I, th- I thank God that you believe in God. But I'm asking a question. Are you born again? Have you allowed Jesus Christ to come into your heart and your, into your life and save you? Have you invited him to do that? Romans 10 and 9 says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He will. I promise you he will. 
Confess him today. Make him Lord of your life. You say you believe in God, great. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. And God, our Heavenly Father, raised him from the dead to justify you and proclaim him as Lord of your life. Call him Lord today. Confess him as Lord today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Hey, listen, go to our website. Get this phone app. Download this phone app and get a good, strong dose of God's Word on a daily basis. Six days a week this podcast comes out. There's over 1,200 podcasts at the time of this this recording today. There's over 1,200 podcasts on, on that thing, and it is free. They're free. You can listen to them as much as you want, seven days a week. You'll never run out of something to listen to if you're looking for something to be fed with at theprodigalson.com. I promise you, God's Word will feed you. It'll strengthen you. It'll help you. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. And if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Now, if you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God's got an answer for your prayer. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com.